So we're just about to interview three residents at Caroline Chisholm. Um, we've got Mike, we've got Diana, and I believe we've got Jeff as well. So these are our first interviews for Secrets, and let's see what happens. with the people at the aged care facility and they gave me a little bit of a brief on Mike. They told me that he has MS, multiple sclerosis, so you know it'll be a little bit slower paced I guess, you know, maybe take a little bit longer to answer some of my questions but we'll see how it goes. So um, Michael, uh, Chase will be interviewing you and JJ and Connor will be doing some filming. Mike, what was it like being a teenager in your day? Well, you have, you probably remember the 60s. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> you know, but if you weren't, if you, it's, it's, Keith Richards said, if you remember the 60s, you weren't really there. In your teenage years, what's, were there any things that you think you were able to get away with that maybe if you grew up today, you may not have been able to get away with Driving cars dangerously. <laughs> um, messing, messing about with chemicals. Drugs? Well, I wouldn't want anybody to know my, my, about my drug adventures, but I'm not telling you either. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. What I wanted, what I, what, what I did was, I was very adventurous. Went to hunting countries, did just several different jobs. Something that you wish you could tell your past self that you've learned over these years. Seize the day, do what you want. Because tomorrow might be, in my case, a bit different. I've just come out of Mike's interview and it was quite it was a quite nice interview, it was very pleasant. Um yeah, Mike actually has multiple sclerosis, so the interview was a lot it was very slow paced than I had expected it to go. Um, but he did tell me a lot, it just took a little bit longer to get sort of answers out of him. But you could really tell that he was getting a little bit frustrated with it. Um, because he really wanted to tell me a lot, but he was very limited in what he could actually like verbalise. So. But no, overall it was really good. Um, we got a lot, of, a lot of footage and went for about 40 minutes. That was a pretty good interview. <laughs> So I'm just about to go into Diana's interview, she's just waiting inside. Um, they did give me a bit of a brief as well with, that they just did with Mike. They said for Diana that she's had a bit of a hard life. Um, they didn't really get into the details, but I'm interested in exploring that a bit. And we'll see what happens, I guess. So Diana, whereabouts did you grow up? In the Nkuma. In the Nkuma. How long were you there for? I was about sixteen. Sixteen, wow. Yeah. So, what was it like being a teenager in your day, growing up? I didn't see a lot of it. I was an abused child. Um, what were? Um... <laughs> I flew <feel> inside me. <laughs>
do you did you have to hide it at the time? I I hid it from my classmates. Yeah, or any of your friends or Yes, and friends and that sort of thing. They, none of them knew what was going on. Did you have any siblings? I had a sister. Sister. She was also abused. So you never you never went to the police to help you? Well, the police have a slightly different attitude now. They tend to um, be on side with the abused child. Whereas in my day, they didn't really take too much notice. Did you live with, um, if you don't mind me asking, both parents? Yes, I lived with both parents. I could seem to run away. I went to street kids and all sorts of people. Mm. I went to street kids. Um, he followed me up there. It was a moment of freedom, something. Yeah. Is freedom something you value? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I certainly did. Mm. I just came out of Diana's interview. It was a little bit confronting, to be honest. Um, her story is absolutely insane. Um, and I really wasn't expecting it so sudden and so abrupt she was like I walked in and she was ready to tell me everything that gone on and I guess I wasn't ready <laughs> I guess you could say that uh, it was a really good interview I'm really happy with it but I'm just kind of feeling a bit heavy <laughs> it's a lot to kind of take in and it's one thing sort of like reading about this sort of story on the news but when they kind of tell you and you can see the emotions on their face. You kind of feel like you you experienced it with them. So we just got a call from Caroline Chisholm, one of the nurses. She said that um, Diana, since our last interview, has been acting a little bit differently. So we're just going to go over and interview her and see what she has to say about it. So thank you so much for coming today. Thank um, you. This is just a bit of a follow-up interview from the ones that we've been doing with Diana, with Mike, with Jeff and also Judith, I think her name was? June. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. So have you observed any sort of change in anything? With Diana, most definitely. She's more focused. She, yeah, it's really hard to say. She's just more into wanting to please with the artwork and mm. she feels really important and she's special. And yes, so it's beautiful. Yeah, it's great yeah. to talk with us. So. Yeah, so it's really good. Yeah, much so better. So, would you say that she um, she's able to like express these emotions more as a result, like or? She's still very closed in, but she will talk a little bit. Um, yeah. The more she has opened up was actually with you yeah. people. Um, yeah, but with wow. nursing staff and other people, she's still very um, yeah secretive and. Yeah, so what you have done is great because yeah, you just sort of crack that egg and let her out a little bit. So yeah, it's fantastic. So. Okay, so um, this particular visit is quite different to our previous visit when we left quite down. Would you agree, Chase? Yeah, it was very different. This one was more, it was about like the positive impact that um, the whole experience is given, but the last one it was more. It was it was a very different sort of tone. We um, dived into stories about people, um, things that they didn't want to share with people, 
um, things that they did share with us and at times it was like it was pretty it was pretty hard to hear but this was really nice because we were able to we were able to see the impact that we were giving on these people and it was it was really beautiful to hear yeah I was quite quite surprised that Diana had is so so uh, private and hadn't said anything to anyone so we in fact as sort of strangers know more about her than those people who've been with her for four or five years in the home like they probably don't know that much at all yeah that was it was i really didn't expect that because she was so open with me yeah. she was right into it yeah and um the lady we interviewed today she um she basically said that a lot of those things that she told me she'd never heard before that She's a very um, reserved person, has a lot of boundaries, and doesn't really open up to a lot of people. Mm. So for her to open up to me, it was just such a blessing. And yeah. It was nice. And now she has a new lease of life and mm. is painting. Yeah, she's able to let all that stuff she's held in for her whole life yeah. through the artwork. It's amazing. They express but, everything. And yeah. And all we had to do was go there for a little bit, an hour yeah. or whatever. That was it. And it's. Mm that hour of our time has changed someone's outlook and and refreshed their life really mm. so it that's, goes to show yeah that's really quite like magical because lynn said that she was um she's now like talking a, a little bit more she's she's communicating with her neighbor a lot more she's participating in clubs and um like a lot of the events that they have there yeah and that just she's noticed a general, um, more of a positive approach to her, and she's more, she's very different. She's come out of her shell a lot. And, yeah. How did you feel that first visit we had? Oh, each um, each interview really affected me differently. Mm. But Diana's was the one that stuck with me. Yeah. Just because of how powerful her story was, and I just felt so incredibly blessed to to have that yeah because not many people get to experience something like that not many people get to you know talk to someone who has such has gone through such hardship and not many people are willing to even tell that story no. and for me to be able to to you know talk to her about it and it's something there's just something about talking to someone mm. uh, like the connection the, the real human connection is just so much more powerful than just reading about it in an article or hearing it on the news but if someone tells you the story and you're asking them questions and you see the emotion on their face when they tell you the, the things that they've been through it's just like it's so powerful and it just it's really stuck with me like,